Man, if you know how many times I've stopped and started this thing over again, you'd be like, Mr. Slate, you spent a lot of time on that just to tell us about 10 words. But I think it's important for me to stop and maybe try to give you an extra explanation to all these and do it in an appropriate way. I mean, I thought it was being inappropriate. Anyway, moving forward, uh, one of the words you have to know this week is a tariff. A tariff is a tax on an imported good. And remember, think about why tariffs happen. If you said to create government revenue and also get people to choose to buy American goods, that's a good answer because that's exactly what tariffs do. And we still use tariffs today. So do a little bit of research. You'll see that right now we have a tariff uh, with China when it comes to aluminum. Okay. Another word we're looking at this week is John Adams. And that's kind of a broad spectrum because John Adams goes across a lot of different things. Uh, chief among them, are the fact that he's a federalist. So we have someone who's going to believe in a strong national government, right? And we're going to see how his uh, vision of America and his idea of how looking at the Constitution is going to be reflected in the day-to-day -day things, right? So remember, uh, federalists believe that the, uh, that the, I'll put it upside down, that the uh, Constitution can be uh, bent and molded and shaped in different ways as long as you can justify why you're doing it, right? So they call this the elastic clause. We'll talk about a little bit about uh, more about that in just a second. We've got the XYZ affair. France is messing with our ships. And we decide to discuss with them uh, to stop doing that. And France tries to take a bribe out on us. We decide as the United States that we weren't going to pay the bribe. And in fact, we kind of send them a threatening message that instead of paying you that bribe, we could spend that money just to build a, a bigger and better a defense, which we really don't have a strong one at this point because we're still early on in our country. Okay, uh, Let's also connect ourselves to Jay's treaty. Okay, So uh, we have Jay's treaty and John Jay, he's the chief justice of the Supreme Court, goes and discusses with England who is also messing with our ships and impressing our, our sailors, which means basically kidnapping them and making them uh, serve in the British Navy. And he makes a deal with them to stop messing with our ships, to leave our sailors alone, and also to remove themselves from American soil. Okay, This treaty won't last and it doesn't really do well. But remember, he's carrying out, John Adams is trying to keep with that vision of an America that stays neutral in foreign problems. We don't want anything. We don't want to be involved with the world's problems. We're just looking out for ourselves. Pigny's Treaty was another treaty that was signed with Spain that's, that uh, said that we could use the Mississippi River in New Orleans. Why is that important? economics right we're an expanding growing country and if we're going to get farmers to push off and move further west we need to make sure that they're going to be able to get their goods to market so this is a really really promising thing for our country too Pickney's treaty so uh foreign policy that's another word you have to know and you know what we're going to connect this to right off the bat if it's an early president about how we try to stay neutral how we try to stay out of the world's problems and we're going to end up in a point where we're not going to have an option. We're going to have to end up going to war. And of all people that we're going to go back to war with, we're going to go back to war with England. But hold off on that. Just realize at this point, foreign, foreign policy, we're just trying to stay neutral. That's what all the early presidents did. Okay. So John Adams had a law written uh, that a lot of people thought was controversial, especially the Democratic Republicans. And it said that if a... Uh, immigrant to our country was criticizing the government, uh, they could be uh, punished, right? So that could be jail. Maybe they could have them removed from the country. They even, uh, the Federalist Party even had people arrested that ran newspapers. Now, the objective here is to get people to stop criticizing the Federalist government. And so this was their way of getting, uh, of doing that. This law eventually just expires out. So it never has to actually get repealed. But out of this law is something very interesting that's going to impact the Civil War. And that's states' rights theory. And states' rights theory says that uh, people, uh, states only have to follow laws uh, that they say that are constitutional. So many of the states, Virginia and Kentucky in particular, said this is a bad law. This is a violation of First Amendment rights. So federal government can't pass a law to do something uh, such as this. So they say, nope, not going to follow it. <clears throat> the last two sets of words are connected to themselves, and this is called strict and loose interpretation of the Constitution. 
So this would, of course, be a loose interpretation of the Constitution, right? So we say that the Constitution can bend and expand to meet the needs of the American people. That would be loose. That's the Federalist. Then we have the strict. And the strict interpretation of the Constitution says you can only do exactly as the Constitution says. You can't step outside of the boundaries of that, right? And that's going to be the Democratic Republicans. So I really hoped you enjoyed this video and it made your studying delightful and that you will do well on the quiz. Have a great day. Bye-bye.